What's up everybody, Jeff Holiday here. You know, when I was growing up, my grandmother told me that there are only two things that you should always try and avoid talking about with people in mixed company. One was politics, and the other was religion. Well, some people just never really get the fucking hint. Shill powers, engage! Now, if you're all familiar with this titanic fucking douche, you're probably wondering why exactly am I wasting my time making a video on Josh Fierstein? Well, I know better YouTubers than I have already tackled him. Armored Skeptic has just utterly, completely torn him up, down, sideways, left, right, back, and forward, and I applaud the Skeptic's work. Uh, Armored Skeptic is amazing. But at the same time, you know, as much as he can masterfully counter what Josh Fierstein does, Josh puts out a lot of videos, and he does it all the time, and not all of them really get responded to, and I really was never going to respond to Josh Fierstein ever. I mean, this maniacal ex-evangelist poppin' fresh-looking motherfucker really doesn't deserve my time. However, sometimes he says things so titanically fucking stupid that I just, I can't help myself. So, here we go. Guys, what's up? Josh Fairstein here. Look, I need to explain to you why what Obama and the Supreme Court just did in legalizing gay marriage in all 50 states... First of all, first of all, Obama did not legalize gay marriage in all 50 states. In fact, the Supreme Court did not legalize gay marriage in all 50 states. They said that states cannot ban gay marriage, and thus gay marriage is legal. They didn't legalize it, necessarily. They said that you can't illegalize it. This might seem in your pea-sized little fucking brain that they have somehow legitimized gay marriage, but it's not necessarily so much that as they have delegitimized the ability for states that are chock-full of bigots to be able to enact bigoted legislation. It's literally usurping the authority of each individual state is the beginning of the Christian Holocaust. <laughs> The Christian Holocaust. Now, I don't like to be necessarily too assuming, especially based uh, upon how people look or uh, certain demeanors that they seem to exhibit. I like to think that I can judge people entirely uh, without condemning them for something so petty. But this Paul Blart looking motherfucker here has just co-opted a term that had a very specific meaning to try and lay more relevance onto what he feels is a deep persecution of his ingrained religious beliefs. Oh! Holocaust, etymologically speaking, comes from Middle English, and it's an offering, a burnt offering or a sacrifice by fire. Uh, something tells me that a bunch of fabulous people who love each other just having a grand old time and getting hitched has nothing to do with burning things? And if it does, I want to be invited to the after party. Now, I know you may think that I'm crazy, but I just need to break it down for you so that you have understanding and knowledge that you can see what is coming. I always like how Josh seems to be trying to impart this wisdom or just teach you because you, you, you small-minded person who might be latching onto every single word that he says and just, oh, clutching at his pant legs, please, for the love of fucking everything, Josh Fierstein, tell me, what should I be afraid of? What's gonna send me to hell? How the fuck do I find salvation? What do I do? Ooh, wow, I gotta calm down. There's very few voices that are speaking this kind of truth today, but here it is. For those of you, first of all, that think Obama is a Christian, you're totally wrong. I don't even know where you get that idea. If you look at Obama and the values and the principles, the things that he supports, the way that he operates, how is it that a Christian could support gay marriage? I also don't tend to like to point out logical fallacies. In fact, I fucking hate it when people point them out to me as if that's somehow going to win an argument. Oh, that was a straw man argument, so I win. That's not how communication works. But at the same time, the logical fuck-up that just happened here is so titanic and amazing, it feels like Bart Simpson should be jumping over it on his fucking skateboard. Holy freaking shit. Obama's not a Christian, despite Obama saying he's a Christian and attending a church and being raised by his Christian mother 
and his grandparents, one being a Methodist, the other one being a Baptist. He's not a Christian because his values are different from yours, Josh Fierstein. But I mean, every other Christian obviously holds true to the same exact standards and ideals, right? Like all those good little Christian soldiers marching off into the Middle East to slaughter people by the thousands, all in the name of Christ. Or how about a little jackbooted little man throwing his hand signals and wandering around gassing all the Jews, who was a Christian. Or you know what, let's just cut straight through the shit. Let's go right for the fucking throat. You want to talk about Christian values and how people can suddenly become not Christian because you don't believe in their ideals or their behavior? What about Jim fucking Jones? Jim Jones, who led 909 people to fucking off themselves. Where do you get the basis of faith to try and convince that many fucking people? I don't know, maybe, uh... Christianity, you titanic fucking moron. How is it that a Christian could support abortion? How is it that a Christian could push Muslim agenda? You cannot. If you are a Christian, you are a Christian above everything else. In fact, you, because God is the supreme authority, you're a Christian before you're even an American. Now, here is the problem today. Now that, that, that gay marriage has been legalized across the board, all 50 states, no matter what the state wants to do about it, now, all of a sudden, it becomes hate speech. The moment that you even want to give a dissenting opinion, the moment that you want to say that you don't stand for gay marriage, look at what happens. All of a sudden, the public outcry, you are a bigot, you're a homophobe. Yes, you are a bigot and a homophobe. If you are against gay marriage, you're a bigot and a homophobe. Why are people having such a hard time fucking grasping this? If you are going against what society is saying in that we are accepting gay people being married because honestly, who really should give a shit at this point except for people who want to stick their nose in other people's business? Nobody cares. But if you decide that you are going to protest and be loud and try and tell people that they can't love who they love and that they can't marry who they want to marry, yes, we're going to call you a bigot and a homophobe. The reason why is because if you actually look up the definition, bigot and homophobe, that's you! You hate people, you're, you're this, you're that, you know. And see, Obama's using the same tactics that Hitler did intimidation. What he does is this. He begins to paint particular groups of people like they are intolerant and they are against progress. No, 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 no. Obama, first of all, this really doesn't have anything to do with Obama. In fact, it has everything to do with society. Society is doing this more than the president is. Obama, I think, tends to try and take a backseat a little bit from these types of social issues, and he lets other people talk about them uh, for this very specific reason, because you don't need any urging to try and pin this on Obama. And I'm not going to say that there's any real nefarious reason for this, except that you yourself have a persecution complex, and you should probably seek immediate therapeutic help. Here we're trying to build this utopian society, but here are these stupid Christians that just want to hold on to their Bibles and their guns because they are intolerant, they are not for progress, and we need to do something about it. We're not talking about guns, okay? We're not talking about guns. You can like guns and not be Christian. There are lots of people like that. And you know, I, I tend to think that anytime somebody who is talking about a religious issue and they start getting really, really piped up and anxious about it and they're trying to get you riled up about it too, uh, they will play to the demographic. And here, Josh Fierstein is doing it uh, kind of expertly. I think it's really obvious, but I don't think most people would. He is bringing in the gun issue because guns represent, in a lot of ways, people feeling like they might be emasculated by the government, that they might have their potency, their ability to uh, enact some sort of protection of their family or themselves or the means to hunt and gather things for themselves, a sense of self-reliance. It's not just about, my gun is my penis, it's more, my gun is part of my power which allows me to be responsible for my family. So he plays on this so that he can try and get you to get riled up and like, oh, they want to take my gun to let all them dirty gay people get married. Honestly, if I was a free-thinking individual and I held the same beliefs as Josh Fierstein, I would be fucking insulted right now because he was trying to play me. 
think about it, America, because this is the way that it's going. They call it progression, but what it really is, it's opening people up to the idea of persecution for people that do not believe the same thing that they believe in. Did this scruffy bearded jack off, this fucking stay puffed fucking moron, just say that he felt persecuted because people who felt differently than him were trying to impose their will on him? whereupon he's trying to defend a ban on people who love each other getting married. Huh. You guys see how the tide of public opinion is turned against the Confederate flag. Now, I don't necessarily have an opinion on the Confederate flag except for this. Except that in one week, it's gone from a non-issue to a humongous issue. I have a number of comments about the whole Confederate flag thing. Uh, I don't know if I'm actually going to make a video about it or not. I honestly just, full disclosure, I honestly just don't really give much of a shit. And it's dividing our nation. And this is how Hitler worked. And this is what Obama's doing. Look at all of the race riots that have been taking place uh, 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 recently. They've all been spurred on by people going in and stirring things up. Why? Because Hitler understood that if you riot and you get people to be afraid, first of all, if you divide America... So all of the race riots that have been happening lately uh, have nothing to do with police shooting civilians. Not at all. That's incidental. This is actually a grand conspiracy by Obama and all them dirty gay people to try and enact some Hitler-esque methodology to split the country in two. We will rent it to Sunda over here and over here and watch the dogs tear each other apart. You fucking dumbass. What the fuck? By race, and you divide people into segments, you can conquer it. But check this out. The minute that there's riots, people get afraid, and people will trade their freedom for safety. Like the freedom to get married? Are we going to trade the freedom of getting married to having safety? What? What? <sighs> and the concept of Josh Fierce out of all people trying to talk about safety is so fucked up. This is the guy that called up some cake shop in Florida and asked them to make a cake that said, we don't support gay marriage, and they wouldn't do it. So he sicked all of his little conservative, creationist, Jesus Crispy fucking followers to go and harass and send death threats to just this little bakery that had no idea it was going to come. There was no there was no outcry, no big thing, no big huge production. He did it because he's a fucking bully. He's an overweight, ego-bloated, maniacal Jack White. He's a former pastor, evangelist. He is an especially good orator. He can speak like a stream of consciousness. He knows exactly what he's going to say. And you see, like, he does this all in one take. I don't do my videos all in one take. I do them unscripted, but I have to cut because I have to stop. I have to drink. I have to drink a lot because of people like Josh Fierstein. But he can talk constantly because he has specifically been trained to organize this almost hypnotic sort of way of lulling people into this this simmering quiet rage so that they will start to accept the things he says that they usually would not because he's saying all the right things that they do agree with you want an America that has no guns and free meals and free health care and free everything and free time where only the police have guns well check this out they have something like that it's called prison Think about it, America. What's coming? It's time to wake up. I'm asking that you would take a few moments and that you would share this video. Why? Why? So you pay attention to me, Josh Fierstein, that dumb fat motherfucker who makes a bunch of videos on his fucking iPhone, sitting in his Ford Windstar, whatever the fuck it is that he drives, ranting about some stupid ass shit. And I cannot even... I don't even think this motherfucker actually believes half the shit that he says. And I'll tell you why. Because people like him, who are as especially skilled in trying to weave about this type of narrative, are usually extremely smart. However, they've also recognized that they are catering to an audience that can benefit them. I, I have to wonder if this entire thing is just simply uh, almost a slapstick, overblown caricature of himself just so that he can rile people up and he will get speaking engagements. He will get ad revenue from his various different things that he's trying to pull. This is his job. He's making money doing this. 
I've been doing YouTube videos for over a year and I haven't even made $30 in revenue in my ads. Maybe I should start doing talks. Because somebody today needs to wake up to the truth that yes, the, uh, that the, the dictators that are in power. What the fuck is this? What, what, what are you doing? Today are stripping freedom from the American people. I promise you. Something scary is coming. So share the video, like, comment below. If you're not my friend already on Facebook, you want a daily dose of truth, click my name at the top of the video. Let's be friends. God bless. Have a beautiful day. All right, my turn to talk. I'm going to make this very short and sweet. I am not anti-Christian. I'm friends with lots of Christians. I'm not even anti-God. And to be totally honest with you, I'm not really an atheist either. I'm a don't-give-a-fuck-theist. I don't care. I don't think about religion ever. Except when these fucking jackasses have to start throwing it in my fucking face and throwing aside all sense of logic or reason. They start using it as a weapon for bigotry. Other than that, I never tend to think about it. I don't think about God or gods. I don't think about any of it. With that in mind, I was, however, raised very Christian. And I do come from a, an extremely Christian household. And I studied the Bible extensively. And actually, to be honest, I kind of study the Bible extensively now because of these exact situations. And there is this disingenuous bullshit that comes about with the whole gay thing and the Bible. And I can explain it very, very simply. The main theme, the main rule against homosexuality in the Bible comes from the book of Leviticus. Leviticus 20, actually. Now, in Leviticus, Leviticus is a, has a very large section dedicated almost specifically just to the rules of the Lord. Old Testament, pre-Jesus, whole thing. Jesus, for the record, never talked about being gay. Never happened. Never happened. In Leviticus, they're talking about it is uh, immoral, it is an abomination to be laying with another man, etc., etc., etc. But also in Leviticus, also among these rules are, thou shalt not breed two different types of animals. So that means dog breeding, your pet is an abomination unto God. You shall not wear clothing of two different types of cloth. So your poly cotton shirt there, Josh Fierstein, might as well be fucking a guy in the butt. If you cheat on your wife, you shall be put to death. Unless you cheated on her with a slave, because a slave is not free and is thus not a real person, and so instead you owe God a goat. I'm not making this up. Or the rule also in Leviticus, which is oddly specific, that if two men are having a fist fight <laughs> in fisticuffs, and one of the men's wives comes out and grabs the other man by the genitals to defend her husband, then it is the moral duty of Christians anywhere to walk up and cut her fucking hand off. Now, this is pretty fucking specific and actually really fucking ludicrous and bizarre. But that's how that part of the Bible reads. The whole thing is just a fever hallucination of just manic bullshit rules that have no relevance whatsoever in our lives. Yet somehow, for some reason, this one passage is the one that you, Josh Verstein, and anybody else who is believing this type of bullshit are going to hold up and call an insurmountable rule that must be obeyed, and it doesn't matter who is hurt or suffers because of it. In the real world, we call that fucking crazy, and you're crazy if you think that way. And to quote a friend of mine who pointed me towards this video, uh, I think Paul Blart here should probably stick to just mall security and not trying to tackle some social issues, okay? The usurping the authority of each individual state is the beginning of the Christian Holocaust. Holocaust, 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 Holocaust. Hello, my name is Jeff Holiday, and I make videos on science and skepticism. Evil mm. biotech. Sometimes I play video games. Break yourself! Mm. And sometimes I'm just goofing off. If you like anything that I do, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like that. And don't forget to check out my other channels. Thanks. Just do it!